Tell us about the nutrition stuff because I believe you've uh, you've dropped four inches around your waist as you've as yeah. you've added all this muscle, which is another thing that people don't understand. Um, that 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 yeah. is, you can uh, you can recomp as you grow and get stronger, especially if you're carrying too much body fat. purpose of today's show is to Thank introduce you. you to our uh our finance guy um and that sounds awfully boring no offense austin but uh finance no, is the most exciting you. topic as you well know for most people yeah. but what what you might want to hear about is how austin who is a knowledge worker a guy that is valued for his brain and his ability to type uh is a strong Good looking, good shaped dude, uh, best shape of his life at 41 years old. So, Austin got in touch with us out of the blue and offered to help. At the time, we had a finance resource, and I kept Austin's number handy because we have moved through about one finance resource per year. And making finance mistakes has been one of our most costly issues because we haven't found a finance person that is fully engaged and committed to what we're doing. No one has cared enough. And so what we did here is what we do with every key hire. We found someone within the starting strength community because that that filters for a whole lot of things. Number one, <clears throat> it filters to ensure that the person is motivated by the right things. You know, if you want to work for the franchise company, you probably shouldn't be motivated by money because uh, I make less than I do. I, I make less now than I did when I was 20. <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and you know, I own most of the company. Um so you shouldn't be motivated by money. And then starting strength filters for people that are uh, able to tolerate delayed gratification. Um, they're able to do hard work for a benefit that happens later on. Um, and generally speaking, starting strength filters for people that, uh, that have a, a, an attitude of giving or care. So like a selfless, helpful type attitude. That's certainly been our experience with hiring people on the franchise team and also bring it on franchise owners. So lengthy introduction, Austin, but welcome to the show, man. Appreciate it. Happy to be here, Ray. So first, let's start with uh, some inspiration for the desk jockeys out there that are aging and yeah. are feeling their bodies slowly withering away and their upper backs slowly hunching over um, and calcifying and uh, their zest for life and their physical capability declining as every year passes. Um, tell us, tell us who you are, what you do, um, where you are now in terms of your fitness and, uh, where you came from as far as your starting numbers go. Sure. So, uh, I'm a, I'm an accountant by trade. I'm a CPA. Um, I've been doing accounting finance work for 15 plus years. Uh, so I'm athletic and strong and all those kinds of things. I, you know, I went to the gym multiple times a week consistently for years and uh, just doing dumbbell stuff, you know, bro stuff and maybe a leg press here and there, uh, bench press. That's, you know, just doing that. That's all I knew how to do. So, yeah. you know, maybe some cable flies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I've uh, been introduced to barbell training and you know, learn how to really train properly. And I've gotten way stronger, way bigger. And I'm 41 years old. So it feels good. You're a numbers guy. Give us the numbers. Yeah. So I, I, the, I did the novice, novice linear progression program twice now. Uh, did it a couple of years ago. I started back in March of 2021. 
I uh, took my squat was 100 pounds at the time, which I think is probably pretty typical for somebody that doesn't train at all. I mean, at that point, this is a couple of years ago, I hadn't trained for you know 10 plus years, really. The, the, the bro stuff I did was back toward college days. And so totally untrained, totally withering and dying and weak and every and all those things. So squat from 100 pounds. Um, I squatted just the other day, 345 for three sets of five. Hell yeah. Uh, bench press from 115 to 230 for three sets of five. Uh, deadlift from 145 to 435 for three. Uh, I got 430 for five, so I'm still working on that. Took my press from 70 to 155 for five. Outstanding. So, yeah, feels good. Every time I see you, I... Uh... I, I just feel like we're doing something special here, man, because you look great. And uh, and we don't see each other very often, but every time I do see you, so much time has passed that the the differences visually are pretty extreme. You know, you're, you're lean, um, you're carrying less fat in your face, you've got more shape, um, your eyes seem wider and brighter, your, your smile seems bigger. <laughs> These are the things I notice on the outside. What's going on on the inside? What? Uh, how are you feeling? What's it's, going through your head? Give me the whole lowdown. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it's awesome. It's it is literally I life know. changing. I mean, you know, right? So, but a lot of people don't know. They can't even fathom it. They have no idea it's even a possibility. Yeah. And so, and I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know I could get super strong. I mean, relatively speaking, again, I know in the grand scheme. You know, I'm sort of strong, but you know, I'll get stronger. But uh, I did not know it was a possibility. I had I was having bicep tendonitis issues and shoulder issues, and couldn't do my curls. And so, if I couldn't do those, I didn't know what I could do. What else is there? And I just thought I'm screwed. I can't work out anymore. It sucks. And uh, you know, did, did the barbell training. So it feels good to walk around being strong. I mean, doing chores around the house or around the yard, carrying whatever, anything. I mean, it's so much easier. You feel better doing it. You feel better just walking around in your day-to-day -day life. I mean, it's it's night and day. And it, you know, it's it goes hand in hand, I think, for me, at least with mental health. You know, if I don't look good and I don't feel good, my mind is weak too. It's all it's it doesn't feel good. You know you something's off in life. And so you know that, you know, you're in a spot you shouldn't be in and you're dying. And it's you know, it's and Maybe some people are comfortable there, but I'm extremely uncomfortable there. Yeah. So it, it feels a lot better to be strong. I want to maximize every moment of my life. I want to maximize every bit of genetic potential that I have. I want to live the best possible existence that I possibly can while I have time on this earth. And I want to share my, my passion for life and my love for all things that are wonderful with the people I care about. And the best way that I can do that is to be strong, uh, sound mind, sound body sort of thing, um, and share share what I've learned and share um, all the positive aspects of my life with others. And uh, it seems like it's a common theme. It seems like the same applies to you. Uh, Absolutely. Your, your story kind of reminds me of, <clears throat> of James Johnson. He's the Salt Lake City guy. He's in his 50s. We had him on the podcast. Brie will link to that. Um, if you want to check that episode out, but he came down here to Boise yesterday just to visit and hang out because it's been a while, and he's uh, he's having the real estate blues at the moment, trying to find a location. Um, so we we had him fire his agent, who is a total selfish knucklehead, like they all are in this business, unfortunately. And they're, he's now using our national real estate broker. Uh, that aside, he comes down, and I'm just looking at him like, holy shit, man, you look awesome. The guy's in his fifties, you know, gray hair. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's a 365 bencher. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I've met him and he looked, his he looks arms, good. He looks like he's in shape. <laughs> yeah, man. His arms, his chest, his back. He just, uh, you know, we, we went to uh, this local bodybuilding gym, powerlifting bodybuilding gym here. And I took him in there and uh, the guy could probably <laughs> out bench, you know, 98% of the guys in there. And there's some gigantic, oh, sure. you know, gear users in there, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just it's just amazing to to um, hang out with a guy like that, and and you mentioned you know kind of the way you present yourself to the world and the way you carry yourself. 
you know, guys, we can pretend that it's 2023 and uh, humans are some special kind of creature that are not, you know, animals and uh, we can live in la la land and pretend everything is is fake and make things up and, and live in a, a world of narratives. But ultimately, we are mammals, okay? So, so mammals are pretty simple in the way they interact with each other and in the way um, that they interact with their environment. And big, strong mammals, as Ripito's talked about many times on his podcast, um, have a different presence about them. They have a different way that they interact with their community and their environment. And uh, it's extremely positive. And you know, growing up, if you're my age or older, uh, it was kind of looked down upon to be a meathead or to be a, a gym goer, but times have changed. You know, Austin's a new wave. Austin's the, the brainiac knowledge worker and the nerds are getting big and strong guys. And, uh, there is something to <laughs> optimizing your physical existence. Like look at my brother, my God, he's, he's 200 pounds now. He's uh, lean, he's strong. He's a, he's a nasty jujitsu blue belt. Um, and he's a, he's he used to be a skinny computer guy. You know, when you talk about me, uh, it, it's just, you know, we talk a lot about uh, older women on this podcast and, and the people this helps the most, but really our core demographic is you, Austin. You know, you you are the majority of the people that are listening to this podcast. Middle aged or later, they've reached the peak, they've crested the peak of just natural physical development. And without intervention, the decline begins. So what do you do to stem that decline? You know, do you go to CrossFit? Do you go do F45? Do you go to cycle bar? Do you pick up running? Um, do you, wh what do you do, right? Well, this, this is what you do. I don't think there's anything better that you could do. And I'm open to your argument if you disagree. And if you have a good argument, come on the show and let's talk. Because uh, in terms of the structural changes this provides and the way that impacts your day-to-day -day happiness and the way that impacts your physique and the way you feel about yourself and the way you carry yourself and your psychology and your interaction with everyone in your life, whether you know them or not, is just, it is too profound and consistent to even fully articulate. You know, you don't, you don't fully know what it means um, until you've done it yourself. So well done, Austin. What advice do you have for Thank people you. that are in your shoes and, uh, and want to be bigger and stronger? I mean, other than the obvious, right? Do the program, but can you, can you share any insights? I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, do the program. But, <laughs> I mean, I think when you tell people, so when I mentioned starting strength to people and I try to kind of give them the, the quick elevator pitch story of how it works, they don't, they don't understand. I don't think it's so abstract. They yep. don't get it. They, they say, oh yeah, you know, I did P90X once or, you know, so, you know I know about training or my shoulders hurt. I can't. you know, hundred plus pounds or however much yeah. in these gyms. And so, you know, it's uh, just know that you can do it. Uh, it's not, I mean, it, it, to me, when I did it, I thought this is magic. It's incredible. Um, but you have, you just have to do it. You have to start and maybe, you know, start with the barbell. Um, just start with the bar and do some squats with just the bar. See how that goes. If you're not feeling it one day, maybe, you know, Bruce Trout, who's coached me, it gave me great advice. Just do the warm-up sets and see how those go. And so, anytime I'm having an off day, or you know, maybe if I'm having a real off day, I take a take a break or whatever. But you know, I just remind myself I just have to go do the warm-up sets. And by the time I do the warm-up sets, I feel good. I do a little, you know a little heavier, and then I go and do my work set, and and I feel great. And it you know it feels awesome. It makes you feel alive. So go do it. You know, it's like when I played rugby, it made me feel alive. And there's not a lot of things that make you feel alive. I mean, sitting at a computer doesn't make you feel alive. No. You know, it doesn't. So this is, this is, gets you engaged in your own life. You know, you need to be in the arena in your life. And it's not, you know, it's not going to happen otherwise. So go do it. Yeah. The, uh, the more you connect with your physical environment, the greater your satisfaction in life will be. That's certainly been my experience. Um, let's hear about Bruce. 
Tell us about Bruce Trout and Bree, who's listening, yeah, by the way, and she's she's sitting here quietly. Um, we're Jocelyn and I were trying to figure out a plan to get her to talk, but that probably won't happen. She's she is here listening, <laughs> just so you guys know. Um, okay, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, so Bree will link to the Bruce Trout episode where he and I spoke about how he lost his leg trying to save someone's ass and uh, his amazing attitude. But Bruce Trout is your coach out of Starting Strength Columbus. Uh, let's let's yes. hear about that. Yeah, Bruce Trout is a phenomenal guy. I mean, he's awesome. Um, he's uh, he's super smart, super articulate. He's, you know, for those that don't know, he's a below the knee amputee. He well, you know, go you can go and listen to his him talk about that on that episode of the podcast. But um, he's also he's super strong too. The guy I think he weighs about 145 pounds, and he's is he just benched 310 which is a state record in Ohio. 308 was a state record for, I think it's USAPL. And so he's just going to go and compete and he'll break that state record. They were going to put him in the, uh, he called it the cripple category, <laughs> cripple class. And so, so it wouldn't have been a proper state record. That might not be the right terminology, but he used that. So I'll use it. <laughs> I'll dare um, you. <laughs> but you're and, probably and, in uh, shadow band on youtube now thanks buddy yeah no i just de demonetized you sorry about that. <laughs> but he's um so he he appealed and they are going to let him compete in the able-bodied category so uh so that's awesome so but anyway bruce is super strong super good he got me in you know i i saw him doing you know lifting and stuff and i said hey how do you do the barbell stuff i've never done that can you help get me started and he said yeah man i can definitely help get you start this was before he was a starting strength coach oh okay and yeah this was a couple of years before so before the gym said, opened, uh, anyway, huh? oh yeah it's before the gym oh, opened. okay yeah. so you knew bruce before and i didn't know that yeah i knew i knew bruce kind of in a personal personal capacity so gotcha um so he's a good personal friend of mine um and uh so yeah i tried it i, I went and bought a barbell i actually at first i made uh, a squat rack out of four by four posts and cement buckets and so I could you know, move those around and do it in my garage. And he told me what to do. He sent me videos from uh, Art of Manliness, did a few videos on the basic barbell movements with Rip, um, sent me those, I did them. And as I was starting to do it, he was like, bro, you're the only Yeah. yeah, nobody knows about it. Yeah. That's the thing. That's that's part of the reason I came on this podcast, Ray, is because, you know, me, I'm kind of shy or whatever. Or I like to just kind of be in the background and don't typically do this kind of thing. But uh, but I, I you know it is important and I'm passionate about it and I want to help people yeah. uh, learn about this. So if this helps in that regard, then perfect. But yeah, so Bruce co coached me and I would send him videos and he would give me tips on, you know, what I'm doing wrong with my squat and you know, as it, as the weight got heavier, I would say, uh, Bruce, it's getting pretty heavy, man. Should I like back off a little bit? Or like, he's like, just try it, try to go five pounds more next time. And he kept pushing me. And I, I would have never got there without that push. Cause I, I would have just said, Ooh, this feels kind of heavy. Maybe I should stop or go lighter. And, uh, and so he pushed me through that, which is, which has been great. So yeah, Bruce is, Bruce is awesome. Outstanding. Do you train at starting strength Columbus? No, I've been down there and visited a couple of times. It's about an hour, 45 minutes for me. Yeah. So it would be hard to do. Yeah. I've been meaning to go down and, and just kind of train. So I had a power rack set up in my garage. This is the other thing about this stuff. Find a way to do it. You know, I, I, like I said, I made a rack and when I got up to about 200 pounds, I knew I needed something a little safer and more stable and safety pins. So I got a power rack, put that in my garage. I mean, if you can get to a gym, get to a gym that's going to be your best bet. But if you're not near a gym, there's online coaching. You can do, do that, but it's not going to happen automatically. You might have some hiccups along the way, getting your, you know, getting your gear, right. Getting, you know, figuring out, you know, getting weights and getting, you know, but invest a little bit of money and time in it and make it a, you know, a priority to figure it out and figure it out and do it. And so, but anyway, I had a power rack. I had to take that out of the
I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Um, so what, how, how do you, I mean, I know it's all about priorities, but tell us about how you prioritize and, and, um, it, and what, what the trade-offs are that are involved and, you know, cause th- you have to be consistent for this to work. You got to train three days a week and you can't, you can't just train when you want to, right? Otherwise you're not training. Right. So mm-hmm. how do you, how do you handle mm-hmm. that? You have got to be consistent. Consistency is, is the big thing. And it, it is kind of as simple as you've got to make it a priority and, you, and to the extent of, okay, something else might be happening in my life. Like if I make, let's, if you don't make it a priority and you say, Hey, I want to make my office work a priority. Okay. Well, your office work might indirectly suffer because spending more time in the office being a you know miserable person is not maybe going to be the best for your office environment or your work. So make, you know, make your physical health a priority and, and then be consistent with it. And so I get up in the morning, I set my alarm for 515. I get up, I go to the gym, I get my workout in, I get to work at a normal time. And, and then I have to go to bed early. I got to make sure I'm getting to sleep. So, you know, like we, you guys all, you know, we always talk about Stan efforting and getting sleep and proper nutrition and dialing it all in and, and make it a priority to do all of that. Yep. And so, and it, but it only ends up taking, you know, a few hours a week. So three hours a week, if you can't, you know, find time for that, you know, that's, that's on you. It's not, it's not a real hurdle. Well said, well said. If you can't find three hours a week, that's on you. Yeah. Um, tell us about the nutrition stuff, because I believe you've, uh, you've dropped four inches around your waist. Have you, as yeah. you've added all. Ten ground beef a day with a little bit of rice, some chicken stock, and some sweet potato, and it's the it's the staple of my diet. It's inexpensive. It's healthy. It gives me the macros and the micros that I need. It gets me to where I want to be performance wise, um, aesthetics wise. It improves how I feel. Um, it's super easy. It's fast. I don't have a lot of time. And quite honestly, this is going to sound a little bit odd. It's my favorite food. Um, yeah, After this podcast, it's not bad at all. I, I really enjoy it. I crave it. I eat it for breakfast. I eat it late at night. I eat it all the time. So it's like, and I, by the way, I'm not making any money telling you guys this, right? Just, uh, no, right, yeah. I'm just, I'm just a big fan. I think you should listen to Ripito when it comes to getting stronger. And I think you should listen to Efforting when it comes to dialing in your, your nutrition. Um, I bring food on trips with me because I just cannot stomach fast food, literally and figuratively. Um, it just, uh, it just, I don't feel good when I eat that shit. You know, I don't want to go to Taco Bell. I don't want to go to McDonald's. Um, If I have to go out and be social and eat with friends, I will. But I actually eat a Monster Mash before I leave. So that when I go there, I'm just getting a beer or getting some snacks. Um, Because all the oils and shit they use in food and the way they prepare this stuff, it's like, I don't don't want to consume that that garbage. Um, Yeah. So... It, I'm glad I can do this at this stage in my life. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 38 now and I've got a family. And, uh, when I was younger, that would have been tough for my social situation. But now it's like, I have monster mash in the fridge of the office. I've got monster mash in my, in my fridge at home. Um, I can eat, I've got, all you need is a microwave in three minutes and just, there's a meal, right? So what's, uh, what's your, what's your nutrition situation and give us some tips on the recovery side and anything else you do to, to improve, um, the results that you're achieving with your, with your training. So, you know, I talked with you, maybe it was it five months ago or so now and said, you know, Hey, what do you, what do you, what should I do for nutrition and you know, help me out? Any tips you can get? I, you know, you had given me some tips in the past on, uh, I think training and things. And, and I said, anything you can tell me, I'll take. And you laid out some of the nutrition stuff. Hey, you know, eat monster mash, eat sweet potatoes, get a gram to a gram and a half of protein for pound of body weight that you want to be at. So, and I took all that immediately to heart and I was said, I need to do this stuff. So I don't think I've got it quite as dialed in as you do, but I've, I've got it pretty good. I eat them. I basically eat monster mash at least once a day, or for me, I do rice and ground beef and I'll have some veggies or if I have, see, this is where it's not dialed in quite as much as you, but I'll make some potatoes, throw them in. If I can, I might not have the potatoes in there every time, but, but that's great. I put a different kind of seasoning or sauce on it. 
some hot sauce or something, eat that. The other thing I'm doing, Ray, which I'd be interested to get your thoughts on this to help with my protein is I'm doing uh, two protein shakes a day. So I'll just grab like two scoops. It's like beef protein. Uh, so each shake, I mix it with water. I was mixing it with whole milk and I felt like it was a little bit more calories and fat than I needed at the time. So mix it with water. Um, those are each about 50 grams of protein just from the, the shakes. So there's hundred grams right there. And then I'm doing, you know, a monster mash, uh, and then maybe another monster mash or something similar to that, some rice and beef or something. And then some other meal, uh, maybe it's salmon and veggies or something. Yeah. So I'm getting about five meals a day. Typically, if you count the two shakes as a meal. Right on. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of protein shakes personally. I think that uh, protein shakes can be useful in a couple of instances for the trainee that is uh, trying to limit calories or is getting too many calories elsewhere, but needs to get protein and just protein. That is an obvious solution. I don't know the, uh, I don't know how this pans out practically speaking, but theoretically speaking, um, whey protein powder is a highly processed food which in theory right. should trigger yeah. an insulin response. And I'm sure there's a study, and if, if a YouTuber's listening to this and wants a link to the study, go for it. But that triggers an insulin response, which means it kind of behaves like sugar. Um, and, uh, you know, that's one of the main reasons why I always promote whole foods. Eat stuff that uh, looks like it did when it was picked from the ground um, or when it was uh, carved out of the animal, you know? So eat minimally processed food. The more processed the food... Um, the, uh, the, the bigger the insulin response will be. And in my line of work, when I moonlight as an EMT, I don't know what percentage of issues can be whittled down to people not looking after their blood sugar, but it's a lot. It's a lot. So this is where most people fuck up. We, uh, carbohydrates are for energy. Carbohydrates are for body weight growth. So if you want to get heavier, if you want to weigh more, Carbohydrates are the easiest way to do that. They're super palatable, and it's a very simple way to increase your caloric load. In fact, Efferdine recommends that if you're trying to gain weight, that you actually eat less protein than you would um, otherwise. So, you know, you mentioned a, a gram to a gram and a half per pound of tar target body weight. Lower the protein a bit because protein is really satiating. Eat more carbs because they're less satiating, and then you can eat more food and consume more calories. So in general, let's just broaden that out as a, as a piece of advice. Uh, view processed foods and carbohydrates as a way to gain body weight. But don't be black and white about this because the, what, what, proce what, what carbohydrate, carbohydrates are also for is to fuel your activity. And so a simpler way to look at it maybe is just to consider that your, your caloric load from carbs should match your daily activity requirements. If you're eating um, 400 grams of carbohydrates per meal and you're sitting at a desk all day, um, I'm being extreme here, but that's, that's going to be a problem, okay? <laughs> if, <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're Phelps, if you're Michael Phelps and you're eating multiple large pizzas every day, um, but you're swimming mile, however much he's swimming every day, it's that's fine. You need the fuel. So don't overload your human machine with excess fuel. And, and that's, that's kind of the, what I view carbs as. Um, now granted fat fats are tricky too, because fats are easy to hide. Um, and you can eat a whole bunch of fat without knowing it, like especially liquid fats, like oils and things. But, um, I think generally speaking, I think a very simple template to follow here, guys, and I'll, I'll just share this with you because it applies to a lot of people, guys and gals, is eat one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. Okay, that's just your baseline. And then if you need to gain body weight, then try to eat whole foods as much as possible. Increase your caloric load. Best way to increase your caloric load, carbohydrates. Best carbohydrates to eat, in my opinion, based on my experience and as reinforced by Stan, white rice, sweet potatoes. Um, that will get you most of the way to where you want to be, and then you can just simply manipulate fat accordingly. So I think, I think those are the main pieces of advice that I have. The other one is find your staple food. Find your staple food. 
something you can eat every day. Don't get tired of it. You love it. It's high protein. You know, 50 grams of protein uh, per per meal, ideally. More is fine. <clears throat> um, and And just eat that religiously. Make that your thing. Make that kind of the core of your diet. And don't, don't look at food as a source of entertainment. Food can be a source of entertainment sometimes, but if you're approaching every meal like it's gotta make you happy and put a smile on your face, well, you're a drug addict, okay? Um, that's not the point of food. The point of food is fuel. And uh, yes, you should get enjoyment from food. I get a lot of enjoyment out of my fuel, but it's not enjoyment first. It's performance first and enjoyment second. And I just so happen to have found a staple meal for me that I enjoy so much that it accomplishes both. But um, hey, if you're an adult, what what are you eating pizza all the time for? What are you eating bags of chips for? What are you what are you eating ice cream for? What are you eating candy for? What are you doing? It's not it's not smart. Yeah, it's it's just not yeah, smart. Chips. You know, I'm no. telling you, I'm telling you straight up that the what that does to your insulin situation, your blood sugar situation, um, unless you're an athlete and you're just just chewing everything up, and even then it's you know eating eating shitty probably increases your inflammation. Unless you you need all those calories and all that fuel, um, you're really you're really sacrificing short term in the moment joy for medium and long term health and the ability to be there for your family and be a productive human being. And if you don't if you don't believe me, just go visit any assisted living facility. You know, um, these are all people that have not managed your diet appropriately. They they just they do what everybody else does, right? Um, when you go out to eat, the menu is the menu. When you go to the store. The options are the options. You just buy what's there. You eat cereal. You eat whatever. And then before you know it, you're a type 2 diabetic, which is a lifestyle disease. It's glucose poisoning, as Ripito says, you know. Um, and once you start down that path, uh, it's it can be reversed. We reverse it in the gyms all the time. But don't don't go there. You don't need to put your body through that. And if you if you continue on as a type 2 diabetic, your prognosis is not great. You're going to have problems. Um I've got a personal sto story to share here, but I'll save it for the next podcast because it's a little bit too raw. But uh, don't fuck around with your health, guys, okay? It's not worth it. Um, and you can just do some simple things to achieve all the goals that you have in terms of enjoyment and physique and performance. And, uh, and it's not that hard, and it's cheaper, and it's faster. So again, I'm not making any money by, by giving you nutrition advice. Um, I just, I strongly believe that one of the fundamental keys to your health, longevity, and happiness outside of training with a barbell is getting your nutrition in order. And so I, I, I strongly advise you guys listening to this that know you're fucking up and eating fast food every day or whatever. Try to change a habit. Try to change a habit. It's not easy, but easy doesn't work. That's our motto, right? Easy doesn't work. Um, but once you change the habit and you have a new habit, it becomes easy. It's not hard for me to eat Monster Mash four times a day. I prefer it. It's what I want to do. So in fact, let me, yeah. let me, let me give you guys a little challenge here for those of you that are interested in this. Um, go turn on my phone right now and give you my recipe if you're, if you're in a similar situation as me, kind of body comp wise and strength wise. Mm -hmm. Go to the store, buy 90-10 lean grass-fed ground beef. You don't have to, to use grass-fed. I do because I believe that uh, the higher omega-6 content of corn-fed um, is probably not good for the inflammation situation and I suffer from uh, inflammatory disease, so I, I prefer grass-fed. I, I can't even tell the difference in taste. Go get some white rice. Um, if you want the secret Asian mom white rice tip, it's uh, I believe it's SR22. I'll double check, and if I'm wrong, Brie will post it on the screen here. SR22, it's uh, three, I believe it's three sisters rice from uh, Vietnam grown in Thailand. Okay, this might sound silly, but this is really good tasting rice, okay? <laughs> like, uh, Kathy, my <laughs> wife's mom was raving about it. She's a phenomenal cook. And I was like, how different could it be? It's just rice. And we, we bought some, which is hard to find because there's it's such good rice, it's award-winning. There's knockoffs and stuff online if you're not careful. <laughs> So I get this rice and then, and then it just smells amazing and it just has like this texture and it tastes great. So it's, there is a difference in rice quality. All right. Um, and this is the rice to get, get sweet potatoes and, and, and cook this up. Here is my recipe. It's uh, seven pounds of 90, 10 ground beef, five cups of cooked rice, three sisters cooked rice and two sweet potatoes. 
This rice is so good, by the way. Brandon Kubo, the GM over at Boise, I told him about it. He got excited about it. We got him a bag. Um, the gal, you know, Becky, who works on our team and helps with payroll and a bunch of stuff, uh, she she went and bought a bag for him at her local store because you can't get it out here and it was hard to get online and then shipped it to him. <laughs> and then she, <laughs> she's going to she's gonna come visit us, uh, I think, in the fall. Um, might be the summer. And uh, she's going to fill up her trunk with, with this rice. So... Um, oh, awesome. maybe, maybe I shouldn't be promoting it. It's going to make it harder to buy. But in any in any case, <laughs> um, so seven pounds, ninety ten ground beef, grass fed, five cups cooked rice, two sweet potatoes, and I eat about um, I eat about two of those batches per week. Two of those batches per week, so about fourteen pounds of of beef per week. Um, never felt better. Never been in better shape, body comp wise. Never in my life. Thirty eight years old. You know. Um, and I was hanging out with James Johnson the other day, just like I told you, Austin. And uh, and he, I was squatting with him at the gym. And when I finished my set, he just looked over at me. He's like, man, I cannot believe you were that skinny guy that I've seen in the pictures. I was like, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what, Ray? There's something else, too. When I saw you in person for the first time, you look much bigger in person. It doesn't come through on the camera. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Hey, tell that to the fucking yeah. haters, okay? All these guys talking shit on me in the YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, haters. It's, you want to talk shit, wrong. come come to Boise and let's talk in person, all right? <laughs> yeah. I actually don't. I'm old and beat up. I'm not, I shouldn't talk to you anymore. My hips hurt. <laughs> I was I was wondering what kind of hater comments we could get out of this. Uh, well, I mean, I, uh, I, I just, I think most of them are just having fun, you know, just call it, calling all yeah, the starting yeah. strength coaches fat because it's a good time. <laughs> and honestly, haters, we love you, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I look forward to your comments. Um, you help with engagement. You just help us grow the channel. So thank you. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about training wise? Because if not, I want to talk to you about business for a minute. Oh, uh, training wise. I think we about covered it. I mean, we covered the nutrition. One thing real quick, you said, you know, talk about eating for pleasure. I mean, if you, like you said, if you get on a good, better diet and you're getting carbs to fuel your workouts and you're getting, you're recovering, you're going to feel good. It's going to physically, your body will feel really good. So, you know, then you'll start to want to eat that way because you realize it all, you know, works and makes you healthy. So, yep. Yep. Um, all right, let's talk business. So you've been around companies a long time. You, uh, the numbers don't lie, right? So there's the, there's the public perception of a company and then there's the actual performance of the company as defined by the numbers. It's like numbers on the bar, right? Um, so you've seen a bunch of different companies. You've seen how companies spend. You've seen their financial health. You've seen their growth. You've seen companies that are self-funded. You've seen companies that are fundraised. I'm sure you've seen public companies. Um, I would like your perspective on starting Strength Gyms, the franchise company, and uh, what your view is of our business health, business performance, and just in general, anything you want to share. Yeah, I mean, numbers-wise, I think it's you know pretty incredible what you've done with. Uh, I'll say a small loan. I don't, you know, I don't know how many numbers you want to get out, but a you can get whatever numbers you want. And, and Austin's referring to the SBA loan that we took out um, yeah. after COVID. So the government uh, decided to destroy retail services businesses, and is like, oh, for those of you that are still alive, you know, we'll dangle a little low interest rate loan in front of your faces. And so we took as much money as we could without any nasty clauses like personal guarantees and things. Um, so yeah, we took out two hundred k. Yeah. So 200,000. 200 K. Yep. Yeah. 200, 200,000. So with, you know, a small loan like that, you've sustained the business for how many years is it now going on five years or so? Or so, yeah, maybe? we have, we have a total of 500 grand invested in the business. Um, yeah. Uh, including that, including that loan. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we started this company in 2018, opened our first gym in 2019. So we've had gyms open for, uh, a little bit over four years now. Um, and yeah, we built this company for half a million bucks. Yeah. And I would say you could have easily another company in a similar situation. You could have been, now I need my second tranche of 500,000. Right. Now I need my third tranche of 500,000. Now I'm at, you know, so on and so forth. And you just, and then you might just lose all of that Sure. and, you know, it doesn't even work. So here you've got something that is working. 
Um, you know, you, we're, we're seeing a small loss each month, but that's because we're reinvesting and we can afford to do that right now. Yep. And that's you know, intentional. We're, we're doubling down on, on marketing and everything else. And if we wanted to pump the brakes on that, we could see a profit, but so that's all strategic and, uh, and it's working and it's impressive. I mean, the way you've been able to, you know, find a, a t- build a team with people that can, you know, work in some kind of augmented fashion, or, you know, you're not, you don't have to hire every single person as a full-time person, you know, and all that kind of stuff and, and be, being stupid with it and stupid, you know, that's how you lose money and that's how you, it doesn't work. So you've been really smart with it and it's, uh, it's working really well. And you've, you know, you've, you've built a good, great team and a really good brand and company. Thank you. Yeah. The brand is definitely not credit to us by any stretch, but we're very grateful to be involved with it. Um, yeah. And I didn't mean to say start. I mean, I know the starting strength brand is not, is not yours, but the gyms, the gyms, yeah. The, the sub yeah, yeah. I follow you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a masterclass on entrepreneurship for free exclusive for listeners and watchers only right now on this podcast. You ready? Our key to success is don't pay the most valuable resource. <laughs> I mean, valuable just in terms of, <laughs> of, uh, of what, so I'm, I'm, I, I started the company and I ran the company up until Luke took over and, uh, I basically didn't make a dime the entire time. I made, I made negative money because I put cash in to invest and then I had to pay for my existence. So I'm losing money every month for, do you know how long that was Austin? Was it three and a half years? It was, uh, yeah, it was three and a half, four years, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I saw a documentary on Muay Thai the other day, and they were interviewing some some um, some guy that had 300 fights, and he was talking in broken English to the camera. He goes, "Muay Thai, it's pain." <laughs> and I'm like, "Entrepreneurship <laughs> is pain." Okay, so uh, if you if you think that uh, th- there's just nothing but glitz and glamour, especially if you're a bootstrap company on a shoestring budget, um, I've got news for you. It is. This is the hardest thing I've ever done by far. And the investment and the sacrifice necessary to build this company the right way so it can be a long-term sustainable business that takes care of members, coaches, gym owners, internal staff, Rip and Steph, everybody. That's a long, painful road unless we're going to be like everybody else. So, um, you know, I mentioned this because I think there are really important problems to solve in the world. And I think that if you are someone who has a vision for solving a problem and you uh, dream about it and it eats you up and you can't stop thinking about it and you have a massive pain tolerance and you're bright enough and hardworking enough, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a genius and I'm not, I don't have the gnarliest work ethic on earth, but um, I'm bright enough and I work hard enough. If you have those three things and uh, you're focused on some problem that needs to be solved, then... I recommend you go for it. I just don't want to, I don't want to pretend that it's fun. It's not fun. Okay. This is brutally hard. Eventually, you know, we just sold our 40th gym. JD Shipley just bought three more gyms in the Houston area. So we just sold our 40th gym. We've got 20 open right now. Um, eventually as this franchise company hits its inflection point and we have 40 plus gyms open, um, austerity will be over and I'll be able to go back to living a normal life. I'm looking forward to those days being over. Are there any other insights you have from looking at our numbers, Austin? And you can be critical too. You can, if there's something that we're not doing well or something we can improve, I'm always interested in your feedback. But uh, yeah, whatever thoughts you have on how we're doing as a business in general, I'd love to hear it. Here's 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 one maybe semi-critical thought. Just so I, I we you could sell your product harder, and I'll, I'll tell you why, right? Because I know you don't like this. You're not a you're not, you're not a sleazy salesman. You'll never. No one will ever take that approach with this but you're you're literally help, helping people improve their welfare and their well-being and their health and saving their life and so you should sell that hard yeah. because it's you, you you owe that to them you know so maybe you know maybe it, and i don't know what that means exactly in a tangible manner but it's like how do you sell that how do yeah. you tell people about that you know you well that's a good question um I don't like to be sold to, man. So yeah, I'm kind of yeah. a I'm kind of a Taleb silver rule sort of guy. You know, I I I, I uh, don't do unto others what you wouldn't want done unto yourself, kind of thing. Um, so we'll never do the hard sale. 
you know, I'm not I'm not hard selling yeah. franchises. I don't want to talk anyone into buying a franchise. If I have to talk you into buying a franchise, it's not going to work out. Oh well, yeah, that, that, that's a different story. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm I'm getting I'm getting to the to the member side of it. I just want to share my philosophy in general. Um, so if I have to sell you on on wanting to buy a franchise, it's not going to work out. That'd be like trying to sell your girlfriend on why she should marry you or something, right? It's like it's got to be opt in. It's got to be mutual desire. Um, now, granted, we could do a better job of letting people know that that we have franchises for sale, and we've just sort of started doing that so far. Up until now, it's just been purely organic inbound stuff. For example, we added a pre-roll uh, to Ripito's podcast where Pete talks about the top five cities that we'd like to go into next. And then we did a social media post with the top 10 cities that we'd like to go into next. And when we posted that social media post and then the, the podcast pre-roll, we got just a flood of inquiries and people wanted to, to buy gyms. Um, we've just been hesitant to do that because we want, we want it to be someone who's deeply embedded in this thing and is aware of what we're doing, is following our story and wants to be involved, wants to be part of it. You know, guys like John Hahn, guys like Luke Schroeder, um, the guys like Jay Livesey. I mean, I could go on and on and on from our franchise owners who are just, you know, they're into this and they uh, they decide to take the plunge, you know. Um, so that's kind of how we look at sales and marketing when it comes to selling franchises. When it, when it comes to, because we're a three-tiered business model, we have to not only get franchisees on board, but we have to get coaches on board and then we have to get members on board, all via the franchise owner with the exception of the first part. Um, the coaches are... Uh, I don't want to hard sell the coaches either, you know. Um, I just, yeah. I just want to, I just want to demonstrate competence and demonstrate value, and I want smart people to notice the competence and the value, and I want them to be attracted to us by that in kind of a, mm, in more of like an honest, organic way. And is it the fastest way to go? No, no. But I believe it is the highest quality way to go. That is the protects us most from getting shitty people involved. What is a company? What is an organization? Just a bunch of people. The quality of that business is just depends on the quality of the people. You know, uh, Elon Musk is uh, is a phenomenal yeah. leader and an amazing businessman. He hires the best engineering talent in the world, and that's how he's able to achieve the things he's able to achieve. People that are committed to the mission, that want more than just the money, they get satisfaction out of being a part of it, and they want to work their asses off to bring something special to life. So that's those are the types of people we're looking for. Um, and when it comes to members. I think that uh, now that I'm focusing on marketing, we'll be able to improve our the way we display ourselves to the public. And the website that I've been talking about forever is up now, and um, oh wow, looks fucking awesome. It looks fucking. <laughs> I gotta awesome. look at it. I saw the uh, the demo of it, and it looked really good. Yeah, so yeah. it looks great. So Bree, Bree, you can throw a screenshot up for the people watching. Um, but uh, it's compelling, it's simple, it's attractive, the copy is, is sharp, um, the offer is clear. I mean, basically you go to the homepage and it says something like, stronger is better, the most effective strength training program in existence, results are guaranteed, no term commitments. And it's got a picture of a normal looking gal doing a deadlift with a coach on the platform right next to her. Um, and then there's a big button that says, uh, try it free. Free 30 minute coaching session. So. That's that's a whole lot of distillation of uh, of ideas and progress and um, programs and copy and imagery and all this other stuff that's taken a long time to to get right. But I think we have a really good formula. And as far as I'm concerned, the way this business is propelled forward is all about the members. I think we're at what twelve hundred something members now in person, and then a few hundred online coaching members. Um, and the more the more full we get these gyms, the more starting strength Austins we create where there's literally not a single membership available at $455 a month, the happier our members will be as evidenced by the demand, the happier our coaches will be because there'll be money in the coffer to pay them appropriately and to give them fulfillment in their jobs. The happier the franchise owners will be because they'll have uh, actually gotten a return on their big risk and their big investment. The happier Rip and Steph will be because the brand is growing and starting strength is making its impact on the world. The happier the franchise team will be because we're affecting real change and we're achieving success from that. And then finally, the happier I will be because all that comes together in a, in a nice uh, symphony. You know, it's kind of a way I look at it. Like I'm sort of the, uh, I'm the orchestrator, you know. Um, but it has to be that way. It has to be that order of operations. And I think a lot of business owners, and we see this all the time with our vendors, these selfish, short-sighted idiots 
that think their own interests and their own money comes first and the customer's interests come second. It's like not only is that foolish and short-sighted from a business perspective, but um, it's just it's just just displays your sheer selfishness <laughs> and your lack of care and understanding. And so we can't we can't work with you. And this is kind of go, going back to the point I made about uh, working with starting strength people, Austin, and why we love having you on the team because that's not you. You know, you're selfless and giving and caring. Um, the other day we were on a call and. Um, I told the group that we need to save 10 grand a month. We're, we're burning, we're burning like 27 K a month. Um, and it's like, yeah, you know, we need to be investing, but that's a little too much. So I want to, I want to, I want to bring us down like 10 K a month. So half of that came from me. We're paying me five grand a month less. Um, and then, uh, the rest of it, we're just going to go find money to save. And every one of the leadership leadership team that I told about this offered to cut their own pay. And I was just like, no, yeah, no. No, none of you, this is not like, we're, we're, we're not in trouble. We don't, we don't have a problem. What we're trying to do is just be smart. And you guys are already way more talented for the salaries that you're earning. There's a, there's a serious mismatch there. And so none of you are earning a, a dime less than you're earning now. That's just not happening. Um, and then for you, you're getting a, you're getting a bit of a raise because you've been, uh, you haven't allowed us to pay you properly, man. So... <laughs> Um, you're providing us with so much it. value and you're charging us, you know, a fraction of what your normal professional rate is. And so now we're at least going to put you on a minimum. So even, even though we're trying to shave 10 grand a month off of our expenditures, we're giving you a little bit of a bump so you can at least have the guaranteed payment. And I just, I just mentioned all this because, um, I think it's important for people to understand the inner workings of this company. I don't want anyone to be under the impression that we're out here, uh, you know, sipping Cristal by the pool. Um, the, this is, uh, this is the hard road, my friends. This is the hard road. You know, um, I could, one certainly... day we'll be sipping crystal. Right? Nah, let's, let's sip, let's sip whiskey. <laughs> no. and rip a on her. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it's not a good, it's not a huge money maker. It's not going to be something like a SAS startup. Hey, we're going to do this and we're going to have, you know, 50 million customers and it's going to make hundreds of millions of dollars. It's that's, that's not the business model. But to your point, you see, you get a lot more, you know, benefit out of it from the fact that you're helping people that, you know, you're actually building an ecosystem that actually brings value to the world. I mean, essentially, and, you know, hopefully that scales up, you know, for the benefit of society, I would say, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, something of a real value. And yep. so anybody involved should feel good about that. Yep. And they certainly do. And, uh, I know the team loves the culture too, because we don't really have bosses on this team. You know, we're pretty flat and we don't have set hours. We don't have working locations. And I've been doing this remote work stuff since 2004. And I know it's in vogue nearly 20 years later because uh, the government forced it to be, but there's always been a more effective way to lead and manage a team. If you're willing to work with people remotely, you can pick talent from anywhere in the world. And if you're willing to work asynchronously where people don't have to have set hours, you can provide a working experience for that top talent that is unlike they can get anywhere else because they've got control over their schedule. They've got autonomy. And what do talented people want? It's like, yeah, money's part of it, but they want fulfillment and they want control over how they spend their time, what they work on and who they work with. And we provide that here. And, and that's, that's how we've assembled a no shit world-class executive leadership team at this company for much, much less than we could do it otherwise. And, uh, and I, I talk to people regularly about their compensation and their hours and everything else. And everyone's kind of doing other stuff. Like a, mo most everyone is involved with, with one of the gyms or multiple gyms and is using that as a revenue source too. A lot of us are moonlighting and doing other stuff to supplement the income. But this is our, our main thing, our main passion, the thing we love the most, the thing that we have the most excitement and belief in for sure. Yeah, man, it's good. Well... Um, what do you want to mention that I haven't asked you about? Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the connection of physical health and mental health. Um, I, so here, I got a phrase for you, right? Yep. I, don't know if you, I don't know if you saw this in the notes that I sent, but so focus on things that you can control. Don't focus on things outside of your control. Like for me, when COVID was happening and you know, I got my health self all wrapped up in politics that's going on. And just like most of the country did, a lot of that's outside of your control. 
and it's going to cause you mental distress and it's not going to benefit you in any way, shape or form. So focus on the things you can control. Um, stop stressing and start gaining. So let's see if we can make this phrase kind of go viral. Make America gain again. <laughs> MAGA, that's kind of catchy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, but uh, no, I think physical health and mental health is a big. couple numbers for you, Ray. So since I'm a numbers guy, um, I did the math on this. And so people fall each year and it costs $50 billion a year to treat medical it you know matters related to falls u.s or worldwide in the u.s uh -huh. 50 billion with a b and one of the main things that leads to falls is lower body weakness is one of the primary conditions that mm -hmm. leads to falls so leg lean muscle mass loss is about one percent a year over the course of your adult life if you're not doing anything mm -hmm. your strength loss is about two to four percent per year Wow. If you're not doing anything. Starting at what um, age on average, do you know? I don't have those details. I have sorts uh, citations here if we want to throw some in, but this is stuff you can just Google. I'll um, bet you it's mid to late thirties. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. it's not, yeah, it's, it's right in there. Obe and then keep in mind, obesity is going up. So you're getting weaker and you're getting heavier yeah. as you age. Yeah. And that's a, not a good combination. Yep. And then guess what? You fall down and you know, you might end up, so let's say people over the age of 65 years old, I think it says here more than one out of four people aged 65 or older fall down in a year. And then a lot of times there's medical costs with that. And 17% of people that are in a nursing home had a fall. And that's a lot of times the reason they're in the nursing home or they can't get up out of bed and they can't get up off the toilet and take care of themselves. And so they need, they need care in a nursing home and guess what? A nursing home, private home, a room in a nursing home costs about $110,000 a year. That would cover a membership in starting strength gyms for 23 years. <laughs> so if people, you know, sit there and they might say, oh, you know what? I'm 55. I know I'm in horrible shape and I'm dying and it's killing me, but I don't, I can't afford to go to that, you know, I can't afford to go to that gym, you know, for that price or, or I'll go to planet fitness for $15 a month or something. And, and I'll be really smart and save a ton of money. You can't not afford to go to the gym. You need to go to the gym. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fraction of an investment, you know, maybe it's several thousand dollars a year compare that to one year in a nursing home, you know, which eventually will happen to people. It happens to people. So, the longer you can postpone that, the better off you are. Absolutely right. Yep. Yeah, you should you should come on a ride along with me someday to see this stuff in person. It's pretty it's pretty sad. Some of these facilities with these uh, people that are shells of themselves and are paying the price for all the poor decisions that they've made every day for decades and decades and decades. That unfortunately are at a point where they can no longer be reversed. That's essentially the theme. So yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Yeah, my own, my own. Go ahead. As I say, my own father is is basically in that condition, so he's he's got somebody that, that can take care of him at his home, but he can he can't walk right now. Yeah, he can only walk a few steps. He's not, you know, he sh there's no reason for that. He can't. It, it, he's never done anything in his life, and and it shows. Yeah. And so yeah. you know, people need to do something, or you know, you're you're just going to wither away, and your old age, you know, your old later years are just going to be miserable. You just be a shell, like you said. Yeah, I want to be the seven-year-old that's built like a brick shit house, you know. Yeah, you ever see Robbie Robinson? You know who that guy is? Uh-uh. He's I, th I think he's, he, I think he's in his eighties and he's jacked. Nice. So look at Sylvester. So, I mean, have you seen Sylvester? Yeah. I mean, a little too much HGH, but uh, <laughs> you can't argue with the way yeah, the guy's yeah. a freak. Yeah. So maybe you don't want to be a freak like that, but at least you can get yourself out of bed and take care of yourself. I'd rather be that than well, the alternative, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, when you quantify things, it kind of has a whole whole different slant. And uh, a, a, a parting piece of advice, and we'll wrap this up. The yeah. numbers don't lie. You know, if, if wherever you're at in your career in your life, um, I recommend that you get familiar with numbers. 
because if you can if you can become proficient at understanding the numerical values that represent a narrative that's being presented to you in any in any forum whether it be business or from the government or whatever you have a superpower when you can go look at the numbers yourself and verify the claims in other words it takes you from being someone that consumes information that other people have interpreted and gives you the ability to to synthesize the information yourself and interpret it yourself this is how we realized i won't say what uh, what disease we're referring to here but it was a one that spread around the world in uh, the early 2020s because i don't want to get demonetized or, or shadow banned but uh this is how we discovered in the early days that this was not an existential threat um when when it hit new york i just pulled the data from the government and there's a there's a website uh, there, there's an article on the website we will not comply you can look at my analysis of the data at that time and I know that data uh, gives you a proportional view of how things are panning out. So I was, I was just simply quantifying who was dying and, and what the hospitalization rates look like. And I checked everything out and I graphed it out. And then I stratified it based on age group and health status. Uh, and when you, when you analyze the numbers from that point of view, it tells a very different story than what's on CNN. And then you can verify for yourself that CNN is full of shit and they're trying to scare you and they're trying to control you. Um, what, what, I mean, I'm assuming, who knows what their actual motives are. But um, yeah, the, the, there, I learned numbers early on, early in my career, probably at age 19, having to do analysis and spreadsheets at Verizon. And then that, that uh, skill set led me to great success at BlackBerry. I was one of the first ones to raise the alarm bell that the company was going to fail based on my analysis of the numbers. Um, and everyone thought I was nuts. And then it led me through to understanding how to manage this business correctly, how to manage my last business correctly, how to navigate the, uh, the health situation we had globally here in the early 2020s. Um, so the, the most impressive CEOs I've ever met are ones that have a very strong relationship with numbers. They've got a, a clear finance background. They can, they can speak to finance people the way Elon Musk speaks to engineers. So just, just wanted to share that, that suggestion for you, wherever you're at in your career, the, the more familiar you become with the spreadsheet, the more powerful you will be in your ability to make good decisions. Um, awesome. Let's leave it there, my friend. I always like talking to you. Uh, please come visit soon. I like hanging out with you too. You know, Austin may seem like a quiet, you know, chill finance guy, but this guy can rage. He's quite a partier, believe it or not. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, man. And, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. See ya. Take care.